Imagine leaving your family and friends to sail to a new world. Our ancestors took the long and perilous journey to America for the promise of religious and political freedom and a better life. Most crossed in the steerage area below deck. Conditions were horrific, unsanitary, and susceptible to disease. The berths below deck were crowded, dark, and damp. You had to eat, socialize, and sleep in the small space provided. Food was limited to pork, herring, rice, oatmeal, and biscuits. There was tea available, but the water was usually not fit to drink by mid-voyage. I can't imagine watching the shores of your homeland slowly disappear from sight. Alone on the ocean, going to a new world that you'd only heard about in the papers. And then there are the perils of the sea. Some days, there was no wind to fill the sails. Rough seas and gale force winds. During stormy weather, the hatches were battened down, sometimes for a week at a time. The air was foul, and with each roll of the ship, families were bumped and bruised, being hurled side to side below deck. There was a real danger of children being crushed. Water leaked through the deck and bedding was soaked. Water was ankle deep and there was no cooking during rough seas. So you might go without eating for a week. Besides weather, immigrants had to trust their captain's experience in navigating by the sun, moon, and stars to guide the way. There was danger from pirates, shipwrecks, and disease. Many perished and were buried at sea, and some died shortly after arriving at the New World. We owe our ancestors our thanks for the good life we now hold so dear. What it must have felt like to finally see land on the horizon after 11 long weeks and know you had survived the perilous journey to America. Hi everybody. Welcome to Digging with Deej. So how did you like the intro? Um... Parts of the intro are true with one branch of my family coming across and parts of it are true with another branch that came later. So um, let's see who I've got in my chat. Let me try to catch up here. Let me back up and welcome everybody. Um, let's see. It's only let me back up so far. Welcome back, Yard Treasures. There's Pull Tab Patty in my house. BC Treasure Trails. Hello. Ambient Girl Digs, the mod with the mostest. Uh, Mama's Gone Detecting. Mark Thomas. Mark the Berg Hunter. Let's see. Javier Garcia. 
Uh, Mama's gone detecting. Let's see. Cynthia Swearingen. Hello, Cynthia. Um, Linda Wallace, I remember, was in the chat. Um, let's see. Susie Q is in the chat with her newest channel that she's creating on um, genealogy, family history. Uh, who else is in my chat? I'm trying to catch up here. Reads Art of Adventure. Welcome. Um, Kep Valley Diggers. Let's see. American Woodland Relics. Says, hey, gang, we are here about to eat supper. Um, hmm. I feel like in oh, Lincoln Central Coins. Welcome. Let's see. Not caught up yet. If I missed you, put something in the chat. Arlene Church, welcome. Pull tab Patty, welcome. Let's see. DF Digger, welcome. S Southwest Florida Treasure Detecting. Welcome. So I hope you guys like the intro. Um, today's topic is going to be about our ancestors' voyage to America. What it was like. Um, some online ways to search for ancestors that you may have to try to find them in ship manifest, things like that. Um, and a little talk about how important it is to talk to the elders in your family to try to get information before it's lost forever. So, <laughs> Mark the Burg Hunter. Is it supper or dinner? Not trying to start the great pop soda debate of 2020. <laughs> It's all coke here in the South, Cynthia Swearingen says. <laughs> so I'm going to start out. I don't think anything has changed um, with the illness list of our uh, community. Um, on the mend, Thor's Treasure, 5280 Adventures, Mama's Gone Detecting, Missouri Mike, Oldies and Goodies. Hi, Biggest Diggus. Welcome. Um, Clarksville Diggers. I think he's better. Ron's getting better. Krusty Clad seems to re have recovered. Um, Adventures in the Dirt. Um, Ken recovered from his illness last week, it sounds like, because he did a great job on the 24 hour live stream. Uh, high energy OG is doing better. Pull tab patties hanging in there. Um, let's see. Charlene was having a little troubles. Sure. With. Uh, no, now I just drew a blank. Oh, no. Relic hunting. South Texas, I think is her channel. Um, then we've got Justin Preet's family. His mother and mother-in-law are ill. Um, Shelly is recovering from Alabama Dirt Diggers. Keep digging Canucks husband in your prayers. Um, Matt of Matt Tomaney of Digging Adventures is going through chemo. Rhonda Tolliver was ill. I don't know if she still is. Um, and then our losses of our community. Red Bean 58, Metal Pirate Mom, and Fox Run Forge, and Bill's wife. Um, 
Papa Roos. So, and um, please keep your prayers for the needy homesteader, Heather. Um, she was the one that I mentioned last week whose husband was killed. They were, they and their, some of their children were in a head-on car accident and he was killed and she's still in the hospital recovering. Her children are recovering. So keep them in your prayers, please. Let's see if I missed anybody. Let me back up a little bit. Got 21 in the chat. If I've missed you, put something in the chat in capital letters. Oh. <laughs> Paul of America Woodland Relics. I had to eat a snicker because I wasn't being me. <laughs> Are you out of sorts, Paul? <laughs> uh, Kept Valley Digger says he thinks that Bill Papa Roos has made his move to Tennessee. Question mark. I don't know. I haven't heard from Bill yet. He said it was coming up. I just don't know when. So oh, Cynthia says, yes, Darcy, he is in Tennessee. Very cool. So... We're going to talk about the voyage across the pond. Okay. Um, when I talk about people coming to America to get away from religious and political um, attacks against their political and religious beliefs. Um, the pilgrims leadership came from religious congregations of what they called brownists. In England, it was illegal to practice any other kind of religion but the Church of England's religion. Okay. And you could go to jail for it. Okay. They didn't have any religious freedoms. Um, so the pilgrims, or what we call the pilgrims, um, they were termed what they call separatists because they fled religious persecution in England for the tolerance. <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, in the 1600s, they first fled to Holland, okay, in the Netherlands, because they were more tolerant of religious freedom, okay. Um, they held many of the Puritan Calvinist type beliefs, okay, but they believed that their congregation should leave the English state church thus labeling them separatists. They went to the Netherlands 1607 to 1608 and many years passed by in Holland, Amsterdam area. And together the congregation decides to create a new settlement in the new world, okay? They made this possible using investors to fund their journey. So investors would get paid in various ways, in land purchases, in um, establishing businesses there, and then people that they paid to come across, they would work for them, kind of like an indentured servant, until they paid for their passage. Uh, let's see, what else do I have here? Um, the separatist movement was looked down upon and was very controversial. Uh, it was illegal in 1559 not to attend church on Sunday and holy days. If you did not attend church in England, you got a fine of $5 per day. In England, people were fined, imprisoned, and some were even executed for holding church services 
that were not in line with the Church of England. Um, the group believed that their culture was endangered after some time in Holland as their children were becoming more Dutch, okay? So these are some of the reasons they left the Netherlands. The hope of attracting others in the same plight, danger of losing their culture, language difficulties in the Netherlands, finding a better, easier place to live, promoting the gospel in remote parts of the world, so, and in a nutshell, find a place to retain their religion, culture, English identity, and language. Okay. The journey to America was very scary because many reports were in the papers about failed colonies that came across. They come across and the people didn't survive. The fear of the natives, the fear that the natives might be you know, violent worries of possibly not finding a good water source or there might be exposure to new diseases and traveling across the sea was dangerous. The first trip, the younger and stronger men were sent to begin the build of the settlement. Um, the Mayflower trip lasted 65 days in 1620. So they apparently had good weather on the way because the voyage across from Europe to America took anywhere from six to 14 weeks, depending on the weather. Uh, my ancestor, Thomas White, came on the ship, the William and Mary, in 1629, nine years after the Pilgrims. Um, now... There were a lot of different kinds of ships that have come across between then and now. Um, let me find my notes on that. Nope, it's on my other piece of paper. So the sixteen, the early sixteen hundreds. To the early 1800s, there were tall ships. And most passage was on container ships that were shipping products across. And what room they had left, they put people in its place. And they were very dark, damp, musty, small quarters um for people and they were below deck the people that couldn't afford the the few cabins that there were on the ship there was usually only one or two besides the captain's cabin they were below deck in steerage with everything that all the products that were being shipped and that so, about the late 1840s to 1850, about the late 1840s, they started building tall ships that had steam power as well as sail power. And the first one, I believe, is in 1849. Let me check. I think it's 1849 or 1847. The SS Savannah was the first fully rigged tall ship to also have steam power. It was hard to find a crew for a ship that was perceived as very dangerous because steam was new. Everybody was afraid of it in the beginning, and it was hard to find a crew to sail it for the first time. Um... It was perceived as a very dangerous voyage from Georgia to Europe in 1819. The new steam power made it more dangerous. The voyage used steam power for part of most days, but the traditional sail power propelled the Savannah for the majority of the journey. 
It was another 30 plus years and more before an American ship had this achievement of crossing under steam power. Now, as time went on, they started building bigger, stronger ships with better technology, steam power, and you had a, a variety of types of ships. Some were container ships as before, only this time under steam power coming across. It was a less expensive way of travel. Okay. And then you had the beautiful ships closer to the 1900s, early 1900s, the Titanic, for example, was a luxury liner. So, Kept Belly Digger says, very cool. From the original Dutch colony, my French ancestors came over in 1600s as well. Very cool. Cynthia says, my family, on the other hand, Native American and Irish potato farmers. Well, I'm going to share with you some of my family history on my mom's side on one branch that came across in 1841. Okay. So, um, I am English, Irish, and Welsh. Okay. On my mother's side, I'm English and Irish. On my dad's side, I'm English and Welsh. Okay. So, this is, I don't know if you can see. This is an old, old, old typewritten family reunion newsletter or something that they handed out to everybody at the 1921 family reunion, 80 years, exactly 80 years after my mother's Austin family crossed the ocean to come to America. The Austin family reunion was held at North Park Saturday, August. Or wait, it starts out saying the history of the Austin family. The Austin family reunion was held at North Park Saturday, August 25th with 104 members present. This family was among the first to settle in Chester Township, which is on the other side of Michigan. Okay. The following history was written and read at the meeting by Mrs. H.J. Austin, one of the oldest members of the family now living. Sometime in the year 1841, in what at that time was far away Ireland, two young people, John Austin and his wife Elizabeth Forsyth Austin, left behind all that was dear to them home, loved ones, friends, and started for America, the land of promise, to establish a new home, making new friends, and begin a life history that reaches down to us today and to unborn generations yet to come. John and Elizabeth were 11 weeks coming across the ocean. The voyage was treacherous and no friend to greet them when they landed in the new world. They stayed in the state of New York a few years while there two of their children were born, Thomas and Mary. Then they came to the southern part of the, this state, stopping in Oakland County, which is south of me. Uh, while there, Joseph and Henry were born. In the year 1848, they came to what is now Chester Township, Ottawa County, Michigan, where they made their permanent home. It was here that their youngest child, Nancy, was born. Soon after coming to Chester, three brothers of John came and settled near them. David, Henry, and Samuel. The three brothers were single and the two oldest never married. Samuel married and had four children, Mary, John, Henry, and Maggie. The two that did not marry made and left good homes out of the wilderness. In the year 1851, 10 years after John left Ireland, Thomas and his wife Sarah came and settled near the others. 
They had three children when they came, Henry, Marianne, and Joseph. Afterwards, six others were added to their family, Samuel, Sarah, Matilda, David, Thomas, and John. Five brothers were now here, but there was one more, a sister Nancy, yet to come. After a short time, she and her husband, John McElveen, came and settled near the others. They had three children when they came, Nancy, Mary, and Eliza. Five brothers and one sister are some here today that can remember all of them, especially the sister and Nancy, as everyone called her. It was said when she first came, one of her brothers objected to her using too much tea. You know that tea is an Irish beverage. <laughs> because it was so hard to get at that time. She said that if she could not have her tea, she would go back to old Ireland. <laughs> she said it warmed her heart and certainly she had a warm heart, a cheerful smile and a pleasant word for everyone. Not one of us that knew her will ever forget her. It has truly been said that the one who brings a gleam of joy into another heart, another life, I just lost, cannot keep it from their own. We do not know how far a kindly deed may reach. It goes on and on, touching lives with its magic, and we all feel that our lives are better for knowing Aunt Nancy McElvey. They are gone. They are of the past. The past memory destined to become dim, dim and faded as time flies swiftly by. The six of the first generation have passed on. Their work is done. The homes they made in the wilderness are ours. Their memories are ours to cherish that knew them and they are pleasant memories. We cannot forget. Let us pass the memories of these sturdy pioneers down to the children so they will not forget they owe these six, the first generation of Austins to come from Ireland to this country. The present today is here and before us, we have the fourth generation. There were six of the first, 20 of the second, 11 of the third, 11 of the 20 have passed and nine of the others are the white haired ones here today. <laughs> a few more such gatherings and we will be but a memory too. The present is always so full of just living do not let it slip away. Use it uselessly. Give it the best that is in you and take the best it offers you. It is easy to say, make the most of today. That is our opportunity, our brief chance. Do not let it leave you with your task unfinished. Do not put off until tomorrow what you should do today. Oh, it's easy to say such things, but it is hard to live up to them. For today seems to come with a rush and is gone before we realize it has been here. Just stop and think what it meant when the first family of Austins came here. The nearest town was Grand Rapids, 20 miles away. It took from two to three days to go and come with an ox team through the woods. Think of the difference between the past and the present. Now you can have a late dinner, get ready for Grand Rapids from their old home, do a lot of business and get home in time for an early supper. Think of the difference in crossing the ocean now and 80 years ago. The difference between one week and 11. And soon you will be going through the air in as many hours. <coughs> Think of sending a small boy to hunt the cows in the woods while he was gone to hear a pack of wolves yelping not far away in another direction in the same woods. Think of staying alone with little children while the father was gone to Grand Rapids for necessities for the home, always and mostly two days and nights to say nothing about once in a while in Indian that was a little inquisitive coming in. 
I think there was one family that had cause to remember their crossing the ocean. Thomas and his wife. This is horrible. <laughs> Thomas and his wife. They discovered when it was too late to go back that in the confusion of getting their things on the ship and each supposing the other had the children, two little tots were left behind. There was no radio at this time, no cable, no way to know, just simply to wait until the next ship sailed, hoping they would be sent. It would be nearly three months at least before the next ship would land in New York. Life was not all sunshine in those days. Can you imagine that? I can't. That's awful. And, and then to be worried for three months and checking every ship that came in. But last of all comes the future. Tomorrow that never seems to come. Hmm. It is always something to look forward to. Just common homemakers were those old pioneers. But remember... It is just these common homemakers that make these United States, that make it a mighty nation. There are four generations represented here today who can tell what the future may bring forth. All the high places of the nation are yours if you strive for them. And may you, as you strive, remember that God, who studies each separate soul out of commonplace lives, makes his beautiful whole. Little did those pioneers ever think of a gathering like this today is, as we might say their honor. Let us never forget to honor their memories. So this was given to me by my great aunt, who was the family historian for many, many, many years. And when I turned 19, I got, I got interested in family history and started working on my dad's family history because I knew my aunt had gotten most of our family, she, a lot of our family history done, not all of it, but a lot of it. And then when I turned 19, no, when I turned 21, she handed me, handed, handed the position over to me as family historian. Hi, Mayor Videos. Let me see if I've missed anybody in the chat. Hi, Brooklyn Treasure Hunter. Hi, Mary Witt. Welcome. Let's see... If I've, hi Mud Swat. Glad you got your token. I don't think I missed anybody, but if I haven't seen you in the chat, say hi. So, what I want to impress upon everybody is it doesn't matter what year your family crossed, there's information out there somewhere. There is definitely information out there somewhere. And start out by talking to the elders in your family. What they know before they're gone and that information is lost forever. And that. Um, then what I would do once you start getting some of your family history, you know, a names, who married whom their children's names and just generation by generation, then call your local library, okay? And see if they have Ancestry Library Edition available at the library. It's free. That's one free form of Ancestry.com. Is available at most libraries, okay? And that is a good way to get started because you will find other family history, other people looking for the same family history. 
and you'll find people you can share that with. Um, Nancy's just put up a link. If you have a German family, I married into a German family. So German root search is a good site to check. Now, some of these, so not all these sites, I, I believe the pages that you're, these link to are free. Some of them may require you to join. I don't, not all of them cost money. Hopefully none of them cost money, but. Yep, Ancestry Library Edition. Um, that's not it. That's that one. Somewhere I have a list. And with my family being Irish, my, one of my mom's families being Irish, Nancy, check Nancy's links in the chat because I've had her put up links to several sites that would be helpful. And I'm sure if you see Susie Q, she's going to be, she's starting a, a second YouTube channel on genealogy. Okay, BC Treasure Trails. What if your first name John, last name Doe? <laughs> I don't know. I've never heard anybody with the last name of Doe. <laughs> well, my problem is my dad's family name is very, very, very common. I mean, it's like it's like researching. My great uncle's family, seen as my great aunt, she didn't work on his family. And now I know why. His last name was Smith. <laughs> so, you know, I had to go buy death records and order death records to, you know, they were only as good as a person offering the information, you know. So... So, has anybody else researched their family history? <laughs> oh, really, Cap Valley? Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, when I worked on German immigration with um, my in-laws, they had never been able to figure out. They knew a date that their family came, but they had never been able to figure out what ship they came across on anything. And I went to ellisisland.com. I think it's called ellisisland.com. And did a search for him. For the great grandfather. And found where he passed. Came across with an aunt and uncle. And it had his destination as Minnesota. He was going to Minnesota. And that. And uh, I was able to order. I mean, they charge you for uh, a certificate that says when they passed. I think they charge you for a copy of the ship's manifest and a photograph of the ship they came across on. And his great great grandfather came across in the early 1900s. So it was on a steam vessel. And I ended up giving that to them on, on his birthday. And he almost cried. So many of you may not realize Ellis Island was not the first immigrant center in the United in America. Castle Garden was the first immigrant center. So there's two. And Nancy has put up another free database for searches. For Castle Garden, that would be anything prior to the 1880s. I would check Castle Garden first. 
anything from the 1880s on, I would check the Ellis Island. Um, Oh, wow. Brooklyn Treasure Hunter says, most people think I'm an Italian because my name is Anthony and I look Italian, but I'm actually Lebanese, Syrian, and Cuban. See, you can't always tell by the name. It's like my Uncle Tony. He was a Dutchman. Smoked the pipe the whole nine yards. He was a doctor. Um, and he was born near Mama's Gone Detecting. <laughs> So, um, I'm trying to remember. It's a really unusual named city. It starts with an M. I can't remember the name of it. I think I told you, Brenda. I had family that was born there, that was married there. Or no, he was born in Chicago, but his parents married in Iowa. So, but his last name was Smith and he was Dutch. So... Cynthia says, I'm a mutt. <laughs> Arlene Church says, me too. <laughs> Mark Thomas says, I'm German Shepherd, Irish Setter, French Poodle, and English Bass Hound. I'm a mutt. <laughs> so, Susie, what did you think? What do you think? What tell us what your channel is going to be about. Is Susie still there? She's still in the chat. Hi, Madison, Maine. I haven't seen her in a while. Madison Maine says, I am a Kennedy, Moody, Fields, and Kemp. I am told I am English, Dutch, and German. There, Susie. She says she has thousands of cemetery photos and records I'm going to film. Very cool. Susie, you want to get on here with me? Let me find... Let me find the link, Susie. Okay, this link's for Susie. Why don't you get on here with me, Susie? Okay. Okay, I'm watching for Susie. Let's see, I need to remove that one from studio. Okay. Hi. Let's see. Who are you calling Madman, Mark? <laughs> no, I'm wait. We're waiting for Susie to get on here. Richie's Madman? Okay. <laughs> so I was really, I thought the, I was really pleased. I really thought that the uh, 24 hours of live streams turned out so good. I think Paul and Nancy did a fabulous job setting it all up. I think everybody did a good job with their live streams. Oh, here's Susie. 
did a fabulous job setting it all up. I think everybody oh, turn did off a your... job with their live stream. Oh, here's Susie. Mute, mute your phone, Susie. Did a fabulous job setting it all up. I think everybody oh, turn did a job okay. with their live stream. Because oh, we have an echo. There. Are you there, Susie? Yep. There we go. We got rid of the echo. There. Where's your yeah, hang on. Where's your um, picture? Yep. There we go. Oh, we didn't there. get rid of the echo. Turn YouTube. Susie, turn YouTube off. All right, I think we're I think okay. We're are we good now? Okay, show me your picture, girl. Do what? I can't see you. Um, I intentionally don't want people to see me because I was taking a nap. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. So I just put my kitty cat up there for right now. Okay, so I was going to. Um, say that anybody that wants to get started working on their family history, they need to talk to the elders in their family. Um, if your library has Ancestry.com and you have a membership to your library, usually it's free. It's free where I live. Um, Ancestry has all different kinds of forms to fill out for your family history so you can keep track of everything. You know, until you decide if you like family history research or not or not, I wouldn't I wouldn't purchase a program for it. Um I had been doing it for 20 20 years before I purchased a program. And then I just loaded everything. Everything's on a different laptop just for my genealogy. So yeah, I have nope. all of mine on a separate hard drive. Right. A, a, um, an external hard drive. So when I go on vacation, I can unplug that and just take my laptop with me. Right. Wherever it is I'm going to research. Right. And it just makes things a whole lot easier. Oh, yeah, it does. Especially but after if you you've been doing, you know, 40, you've got 40 something than years worth of stuff yeah i've got <laughs> a i've got a four drawer filing cabinet full of hard copy and then i've got the basics you know just the main dates and things on yeah i will periodically a program on another laptop i report so that in case something happens i do still have a hard copy right uh, because there are places still that they will not let you take a laptop or a cell phone i don't know why but there are some antiquated places that just won't so you still need to have your pencil and paper and and like deed said you can go online you can print out every kind of form you would ever need there's right. some great forms now for interviewing your elders yep there are samples of questions to ask and i wish i had done that when my dad was alive because yep. that's what got me started my, my dad passed away and every time i would go to the doctor they would say is there a history of so-and-so in your family and my mom's family i knew all them Mm -hmm. passed away his mom and dad had passed away before i was ever born <laughs> i had no clue and i was very fortunate that when i started i started in houston texas where they have one of the biggest genealogical libraries in the country it's called the clayton if you live mm -hmm. anywhere near houston and you want to do genealogy plan yourself a trip to the clayton library yeah there's it's bigger than the Salt Lake City Library? Pardon? Is it bigger than the LDS Library in Salt no, Lake City? it is actually not, but it is the third 
largest in the country. Right. So it's right. pretty big. I think the LDS library is, of course, the biggest. I believe the Newberry in Chicago is the second. Mm -hmm. the, Cl the Clayton in Houston is the third. And I believe the one in Fort Wayne, Indiana is mm -hmm. now the fourth. Right. Now, uh, in, in my area, area, you got a ginormous in, repository in your hand. Oh, yeah, for sure. Now, right here, um, in my little bitty town that I live in, mm -hmm. uh, I don't have family from here, but I'm doing some research for people that do, and they have right. a surprisingly good genealogy section in this little bitty town of 6,000 people. Right, right. Yeah. It's now out in there. Michigan, like said, it is out there. It's out there. You just have to look for it. Now, in Michigan, I research at the Burton Historical Collection in Detroit. I search at the Michigan State Library in Lansing for newspaper records. I go to the Fort Wayne Library. They yeah, have Fort got awesome. so much newspaper records there for everywhere in the country. Lots of records. I've also done some research and was surprised at how much when I lived in Michigan at the library in Saginaw. Yeah. I, yeah. I get a lot of newspapers. History, history is Saginaw. very important to Michiganders. You're going to find a lot of history in Michigan. So yeah, I'm a, I am not an original Michigander, but I did live there, and my goal is to move back. I love Michigan. <laughs> right. I absolutely well, loved it there. I The main reason I had to move was because my house got flooded, and I couldn't live in it. And right. It was December. <laughs> Right. What are you, you going to do? You know, you got no heat. You got no. <laughs> your yeah. floor is on the ground. <laughs> right. Susie, you so, need to turn your microphone up. Uh, I'm actually on my phone, Deej. Oh, this are you? Okay. It's going to go. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Um. So there are a lot of outlets out there. Um to find information. One of my goals this summer is to research my boy's dad's family that is about 30 minutes away where they lived. They were one of the found or se one of several founding families for a town west of me. And um, I finally got my hands on an 1850 map. The Library of Congress doesn't have it. The historical wow. society has the historical society has a wall size copy of it, and it shows the properties that the family owned. And some some are cornfields. So I'm hoping to try to get a permission and be able to detect family land. So yeah, that's say you my goal use for the summer. You can use those same maps to find some really good places to metal detect. Oh, to yeah, for sure. See, Here's where the old school was. Yeah. 60. And, right. Yeah, those old maps are great. Yeah. And then um, the, the gentleman and wife, um, the past president of the Historical Society that I'm a member of, they were the ones that I found that medallion. Remember that? Uh, Ladies of the Maccabees medallion. He just, as a matter uh -huh. of fact, told me, told me, oh, I know where the original log cabin was in the next town up that's not on any map. And I'm going, uh, really? You remember the historical society and you haven't told anybody? <laughs> you know, and he's, uh, he's <laughs> up in the early 90s. And I'm going, uh, you need to show me where that's at. So... Because otherwise, it's lost forever. Hi, Don. Welcome, Detection Connection. Darcy, it sounds like Darcy has done a ton of homework on his. 
I have several families that came from England into Canada first, but most came across to met the Boston area. Okay, let me see what new comments I got. Darcy says, I have a huge document from a fellow who put together a family tree going back to the 1600s of his Laframboy Prevost line. Very cool. Now, you got to remember, I, for, for the past 40 years, I've had people say, oh, I've got information on your family and they give it to me. And then I look at it and I'll say, where did this information come from? What's your source? Okay. No, nope. I'm Rob Random. <laughs> oh, he's Rob Random says, I'm related to Abe Lincoln. He is my second cousin's next door neighbor, uncle's friend, third brother's wife, second husband's auntie's local stores manager. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So. I purchased a lot I, I of I have a real life true story. I have I have an aunt uncle and uncle uncle and cousin uncles. Oh wow. Their last name is Uncle U N K E L. <laughs> yep. Now so my mom and my dad's family <laughs> marry into each other twice like 12 to 16 generations ago. <laughs> Hi, Team Lynch, Beach Metal Detectorist. Hi, Damon, Damon Jacobs. Rob, Rob Random watch Spaceballs much, LOL. <laughs> so, yeah, speaking of Damon... Um, sometime in the future, we will be doing another, another live stream. I'm going to do on my channel, Deej. What? Another thing I'm going to do on my channel is about naming patterns. Naming okay. patterns. Okay, that like, that would be a good topic. I don't think I've ever seen that on there before. the English, they had a very specific way of naming children. Yep, yep. Yep. Yeah, the, the British have a, had a very specific naming pattern. The Dutch yep. have naming patterns. Right. Well, that would be a good idea for a video then, for sure. Hold yeah. on a minute, Damon. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm going to do a couple of those because my, my brick wall involves that. Right. Right. And we all have those. <laughs> I have a big one of those in my dad's side. Everybody has a brick wall. Yeah. The point at which you can't get, you can't find the person. You, and mine, one of mine was in Pennsylvania, where in one county there were 14 people all named Francis Titus. Oh, wow. Hi, Leah. Let's loot. Which one of those 14 was mine? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I'm going to let you go, Susie, because I need to do my uh, drawings for the tokens. Okay? <laughs> but if everybody, you know, be watching for Susie's new channel. All right, let's give something away. Out. What? Hello? Okay. There, I'm going to kick Susie from the studio. Okay, as I was saying, um, Damon Jacobs <laughs> is was my guest um, early February on the weird camera capture that I got at the seller hole permission when I was trying to catch somebody trespassing. And he is going to be coming back for another live stream. He and some of his um, people in his group 
and we are going to discuss the uh, weird, creepy jar of newspaper clippings that I found last spring. So that should be interesting. Yep, Damon Jacobs, that's you. <laughs> so that should be interesting. <laughs> Thanks, Susie, for coming on. I have it's time for me to do the giveaways. <coughs> so Nancy has got. Let's see. Nancy has got um the I've got the questions and Nancy's got the answers. So we are gonna draw four tokens. For my treasure token giveaway. Okay. So. Get your typing fingers ready. Or your texting fingers ready on your phone. To try to win a token. Okay. The first giveaway. I need you to name a kind of bird. And when I wait till I say go. Okay. Okay, name a kind of bird. Get ready, get set, go. Oops, wiggling. I don't see it yet. They are in the U.S. and Europe. England to be specific. No, I still don't see it yet. I'm surprised nobody guessed this one. Wow. This, I'm surprised Rob Random didn't think of this one. Oh, guess who, guess who guessed it? <laughs> Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> stop. Everybody stop. <laughs> okay, the answer was Nancy will put it in the chat. Hi, Joe Copperheads. <laughs> Damon Jacobs Tweety. Falcon, stop. <laughs> Darcy says, Falcon, stop. Okay. Nancy's double checking. Stop. Nope. Did she put it in yet? Oh, she did put it in. Sorry, Nancy, I missed it. Congratulations, Rob Random. You won a token. Let's see what you won here. Okay. So let me turn on my coin camera. Okay.
Ok. Ok. So there it says Billy's Auto Laundry. One dollar in trade. It's a car wash token. So that's what you won. Congratulations. Okay, so now let's see. So you can only win once, okay, a night. All right, so the next one, let me get my get ready, set. Okay, choose a type of fish. Get ready, set, go. Choose a kind of fish. Rob Random says, Wicked, I love petrol head stuff. Do the five, do the five, do the five. Somebody said it already? I missed it. Oh, somebody did. Whoa. Okay, Nancy, who won? Okay, let me put my stops in. Oop. <laughs> now, who did who's our winner this time? Okay, I got to write this down. Let's see, this one is Billy's on. Okay, that's the first one. Okay. Salmon was the answer. That's correct. Tactress. And I need to put my banner up here for a second. Um, and here's my email address. Rob, if you haven't moved, I've got yours. Okay. Let me get back in here. Congratulations, Team Lynch. Let me write down the name of your channel. Team Lynch Beach. Okay, so now we're going to draw yours. Okay, let's switch cameras. Okay. Let's see. It says uh, United States of America, Liberty. And then on this side, it says... Ricky J's car wash, one dollar. So you won a Ricky J's car wash token. Okay. 
Okay, so that's the second one. Okay. Let's switch my camera back. Okay. So, get ready for the next one. All right. Name a breed of snake. Get ready. Get set. Go. Type of snake. Hmm. I don't see it yet. Slithery. <laughs> Rob Random says slithery. This snake is in Michigan. God, I hope there's no black mambas in Michigan. <laughs> her ex-husband. Susie says her ex-husband, Michigan snake. <laughs> oh, no. It's two words. Oh, winner. I see it. Nancy, do you see it? She, it, she popped. She thought of it just as I was saying it was two words. Stop, everybody. Stop. Okay, Nancy. Who's the winner? <laughs> that one was hard. <laughs> Blue Racer is the winner. Arlene Church, congratulations. You won. So let's choose your token. Mix them up. No, oh, we got another. A different kind of car wash token. Okay, let's switch cameras. And set it down there. Socks, rapid car wash. And there's a car on it. Self-serve car and pet wash. So you got a combination car and pet wash. Very cool. All right. Switch our cameras back. There we go. Okay. Let me write that down. Arlene Church. Okay. All right. Hi, Joel. Hi, North Jersey Detector. Okay. Our last draw of the night. Let me get this ready. Congratulations, Arlene. All right. Switch. All right. 
Okay, the final question of the night. Name a game. G-A-M-E, a game. Get ready, get set, go. Welcome back, Reed. I don't see it yet. Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, Nancy. Must have saw it. Who was the first one, Nance? All right, come on, thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> Brooklyn Treasure Hunter, congratulations. Brooklyn Treasure Hunter was the first one to say operation. Very cool. Let's let's draw your token, Brooklyn. Ooh, look at that. Okay, let's switch cameras so I can show you what you won. You have won a senior high five cent lunch token. It says the same thing on both sides. Congratulations. Got a lunch token. So has anybody been out digging? I got to write that down. Brooklyn Treasure Hunter. Okay. Now, um... During the 24-hour live stream, when Karen and I did the coin roll hunt, the person that won that wanted Karen and I to send it to Nancy. <coughs> so I will be, Karen and I will be mailing those items to Nancy because they wanted them to go to her. Um Okay, I need to go back to comments. For silver, her first silver, what? Oh, her first silver, Washington. Oh, wait, scroll back. Congratulations, Melissa. Very cool. Darcy was, said he was out detecting last night, but not digging. Ground is still frozen. Some good targets to dig, though. That's cool. That's cool. Okay, so the winners tonight need to contact me via email. Um, Rob Random, I've got your address, I think. Um, who else do I have here? Team Lynch, make sure you email me your mailing address. I don't have it. Arlene, you're still at the same uh, address, correct? And then Brooklyn Treasure Hunter, I don't think I have your mailing address either. So please email me at the email address up here, the bottom of my screen here. Okay. 
Yeah, Rob, when are you doing the challenge? The spice cupboard challenge. I thought you said that was coming up soon. Okay. Hi, Clark's Cove. Okay, I need to switch this. Okay. If you are thinking about picking up some new technetics equipment or accessories, please use my discount code and you will receive a discount and free shipping. It's in the ticker scrolling across the bottom of the screen. Um, and well, that's not my discount code. That's the wrong one. This is the right one. Looking to purchase some new technetics equipment or accessories, use my code A1537 to get a discount and free shipping. You will be supporting my channel at no extra cost to you. And if you're thinking about other metal detecting equipment that is not the technetics brand, please see my friend at Michigan Metal Detectives, Ray. And he will take care of you. He will hook you up with what you need. All right. Hide that. Hide that. And then... Where is it? I lost it. I lost it, my banner. What happened to it? I have one. There it is right there. Okay, so next in line for live streams tonight is Jersey History Hunters. <coughs> and they are next. You've got a few minutes to uh, take a potty break, get a refreshment, and I'll meet you over there. And thank you very much for coming to my live stream. I hope you enjoyed it. And we will see you soon. Get out there and find your treasure. It's beautiful weather. Spring is coming. And we'll see you soon. Bye, everybody.